And now, practical advice from Eric July. Me calling you fat is objective truth. You a fat motherfucker. Last 10 years or so of Marvel and DC being run into the ground by directionless creatives, cry bullies on Twitter, blue check marks, and some of the thinnest skinned writers you've ever seen in your life, it was inevitable that fans were going to drift away from the hobby and either stop uh, participating with it entirely or, or some of them were going to go in their own direction. And while we do have a dearth of independent comic creators like John De La Rose and Ethan Van Skyver, people with uh, the talent and fan bases to really uh, chip away at the Marvel and DC juggernauts, inevitably somebody was going to step up and they were going to come out with something that dropped their nuts on the table and said, I'm here. And that turned out to be Eric July with his $3.6 million selling ISOM number one. I don't advise that you smoke crack, okay? Smoking crack ain't good. Now, unless you follow Eric on Twitter, you're probably not aware that uh, there's been a lot of controversy when it comes to uh, his particular comic book, but only controversy in the sense that people who feel that they're in control of the industry or they're the gatekeepers of the community itself are the ones who should be dictating what gets made by who and what gets popular. But as an author of the Iron Age myself, I understand that decentralization of our entertainment is what's going to inevitably uh, unravel the stranglehold that these corporations have on our uh, on our favorite IPs. And rather than continue to take shots at them for uh, their ineptitude at creativity, Eric decided to go his own way and he brought the majority of his fan base with him. This inevitably made some of his detractors and haters on uh, the Twitter sphere unhappy. When this was announced, immediately the reply guys in his uh, mentions were going into overtime to lift up the goalpost and keep it uh, moving at a trajectory until it was into another dimension. They called it a grift. They said it wasn't real. They said he was going to take the money and run. They said, oh, well, the comic is real, but it's not going to be any good. They exclaimed that he had a f he went out of his way to buy a fake warehouse and fill it with boxes just to make it look like he was uh, actually making the comic. Rather than go the crowdfunded route, Eric decided to have it made with his own money first and then uh, offer pre-orders before it was released. He spent tens upon tens of thousands of dollars of his money to have something made that was not only quality, but also finished so that fans, when they bought it, would not have to wait long for it. The goalpost moved from one side of the field to the other side of the state. They said it wouldn't make... They wouldn't, it wouldn't even come close to a million. It got past a million. Well, it'll never make two million. It can't, it got up to $3.6 million raised. 40, over 40,000 copies of this comic book were sold and still Eric's detractors insisted he was a loser and he what he made would never come into people's hands and even if it did it would not uh, be any good. Eric successfully launched the highest grossing independent comic in history and what did you hear from the comic book news sites? Almost nothing. The ones who are all up Marvel and DC's ass had absolutely nothing to say. Even other black comic book creators and black comic book creation companies were actively either going out of their way to pretend that Eric didn't exist or outright saying they didn't want to hear what he had to say. Now, some people might toss that up to Eric's politics. He's a libertarian. Frankly, I toss it up to sheer envy and jealousy and utter pettiness. Some people, when they see others succeed, project their own failures onto that person because they cannot stand that somebody else accomplished something they know they can't. The drama surrounding his comic is almost as entertaining as the comic itself. But all of that is small potatoes compared to where we're at now, actually having the comic in our hands. So now that we're here and now that it's actually in our hands, how is it? It's good. To put a finer point on it without getting into spoilers uh, that are specific to the story, it is a good, solid start. Think about TV shows. Not every TV show hits the ground running like Breaking Bad. Some TV shows take a season to find their footing and get up to speed by the time they get to uh, the second season. 
some of my favorite shows like Futurama and Parks and Rec, uh, arguably their worst seasons were the first ones where all the right all the right characters were in place and all the pieces were there, uh, but the writers hadn't found their footing just yet and they hadn't uh, discovered how to best make use of all the dynamics and uh, writing just yet. I saw number one is a bit like that. It's a season premiere, if you will. It's a solid start to the journey, not without some issues, but it uh, inevitably gets you into the world and will guide you into wherever it goes next. Eric drops you into what he calls the Ripaverse. And in this world, you have people with superpowers who are known as Excepts. And one of them is the main character, Avery, who is a former superhero who is now out of the business, drawn back into it to investigate the disappearance of one of his sister's friends. That brings him into conflict with an old friend named De an old friend and presumably a crime boss named Darren. And as the book goes on, the mystery deepens. Other characters from the Ripperverse uh, make appearance make appearances so that you know who they are. Characters who will have their own titles in the future. When I mentioned that Eric spent a lot of his own money to help have this made, it really shows. Uh, the video that I'm taking does not do justice to the quality of the paper in this book. That is one of the things you'll notice first is this is gorgeous to look at. It is a uh, very high quality, glossy paper. It's edited well, arranged well, lettered well. You will not find a, a comic that is much better made than this. For the money that he put into this, he got his money's worth. This is a gorgeous looking book. And because Eric got industry professionals and honestly, like what other comic uh, books come Richards with its own and code Gabe of ethics, ethics. This is uh, a man to help make the interior art on this. The art on the interior is you to understand that he very is not professional. Do this make no mistake just about to it. Treat you this like is garbage. a professional looking comic in every sense of the word. If I showed you this without any backstory to it whatsoever, yes, you would assume that it came from a larger publication house. Now there were a lot of there were a lot of gorgeous things uh, and uh, extras that you could have bought. There were some trading cards. There were some signed copies. Eric dropped this when I was between checks and I was not able to get the number one signed copy that I really wanted. And hopefully I'll be able to get that at some point in the future, looking on eBay. But regardless, this is a quality product. Now the question is, if you're not a fan of Eric's, would you uh, want to buy this? I think yes. This is something that you would want to be in on the uh, ground up from. Uh, you've got a place to start here. I'm a few years behind Common America and I still have to catch up to that particular comic. If you're not a regular watcher of Eric's videos, what you might be thrown off by is the character of Avery. It speaks with Eric's voice essentially. That is to say, when I was reading this, I definitely uh, heard Eric's voice coming out of this character's mouth, uh, just in the way his verbal vernacular uh, rolls off of his tongue. He talks like Eric. It's very noticeable, and that's, that's good in a way. Eric's putting uh, what he knows into this. Eric's not uh, unknown in the indie creative space. He's an independent musician. Uh, he's been a YouTuber for the past 10 years, so he knows that... Uh, even if he's delving into a venture with which uh, he hasn't done before, which you know this is his first comic, he hasn't uh, written a comic before, to, to my knowledge. Um, there's always going to be uh, what you call some stumbling blocks, and at that point, this point, uh, in order to talk about the rest of the comic, I'm going to delve into some light spoilers. So consider this your spoiler warning. Okay, with that out the way. Okay, now is the comic perfect? Not entirely. Remember what I said about uh, this being like a first episode or a pilot episode or a first season? Uh, the skeleton of what's to come is there. What we've got are the bones of a good story. I would uh, probably say that the writing is uh, the least strong element of the comic itself. Now I know I'm coming from almost a place of bias because I've been a longtime writer, I'm an author myself, and like a musician who listens to other musicians, you know, who can't help but listen to a song and break it down by its components and think about what they would do differently, 
and uh, I know how the sausage is made. So for me, the writing is what sticks out a lot more the most, especially when it's not quite as polished as the rest of the comic is. Show don't tell is something that we use a lot in uh, writing in that you uh, use your reader's imagination to do a lot of the work for you. It's a, it's a strange little beam to balance on. If you tell too much, you're essentially reading a Wikipedia entry version of a story. If you show too much but don't tell enough, then you're left with a reader who's confused and kind of wondering what they're looking at. This can apply to comics as well because there's a lot of things in the comic that are shown but not explicitly told. One of those things being uh, Avery's power set, which just from what you see, you're never told what his powers are. You infer from the comic that he is kind of the super soldier archetype. He's super strong, he has uh, super endurance, he doesn't run much faster than uh, a normal person, and he also can't fly. You're shown enough to be able to infer that that's what his powers are. Where I felt there could have been a little more improvement was some internal narration to kind of help flesh out uh, elements of the world that uh, you're being introduced to. Uh, there's uh, maybe a B story that's going on with some people at his ranch that uh, doesn't conclude by the end of the book. Um, you're not really shown a whole lot of the relationship between uh, Avery and the guy he's leaving behind at the ranch or the people who the people moving into the ranch really even are likewise Yara shows up and you will notice her as the uh, the blonde Wonder Woman face of the Ripaverse but you know she's called Yara and she flies and she has powers but her appearance in the comic is almost a cameo she's essentially just flying through she bumps into Avery has a fight with Avery and then she's gone we don't really know what she was up to other than she was being hunted by another group of excepts called the Alpha Corps, who are presumably getting their own title at some point. It would have been nice to have a little more context about the relationship that these characters all have between each other, uh, what their motivations for you know being antagonistic towards each other was uh, the result of. There were some uh, panels that are left bare that I felt like with a little bit of internal uh, narration probably could have helped flesh some things out. Don't get me wrong, still good, it's just it needs a little more touch on the, uh, on the narrative side of things to uh, truly help uh, make it feel like it's coming alive, uh, that it's, a, a, it's its own unique world with its own unique uh, set of rules to it and where everyone fit in that world fits within that world in relation to other people and to the public at large. ISOM number one is good. It's a solid start. And time and subsequent follow-up issues will decide if the Ripperverse will succeed or fail on its own merits. I wish Eric the best and I will be there for the rest of the Ripperverse comics to be coming out. For now, I'm author John A. Douglas. If you want to check out Eric's comics, I've got all the links in the description. And like Eric says, be great. We will win.